Everyone working in a school deserves the chance to improve and develop in their own direction, in their own way. But how can a CPD leader ensure this all works towards school improvement as well? Cynthia Francis has a strategic approach. Staff might follow externally accredited courses, but the work, the research and the reflection is done here at Norbury Manor. And at the same time, she's developed a style of co-coaching that draws in everybody at the school. It's much more effective professional development goes on inside the school, working with your colleagues, trying things out in the classroom. You learn much more from that sort of activity than you do just going off for a day on a course. So we're going to be looking at using what you know about speed, distance and time to solve problems, but you're going to be solving those problems in a group. So we're also looking at how you can work together. Marie Nassau was able to take a master's degree, or MA, while continuing to teach at the school. So Cynthia came up and said we've got this fabulous opportunity. St Mary's University have said that they will come in and, you know, help people to do MA so they'll come in twice weekly rather than you have to go anywhere but we need seven people and we've only got six Marie. <laughs> I went oh <laughs> it was basically how it came about. I really had not before that time thought of doing an MA. I thought I didn't have time and then I thought about it I thought actually it's a fantastic opportunity it's being half funded I'd never be able to afford it on my own they're coming here it just seemed you know, you can't look a gift horse, as they say. I suppose I was doing an MA, which was CPD, but it was kind of about CPD as well, because it was about how you can kind of get those conversations going, and getting people talking about teaching and learning. And then I went on a course at Central Foundation Girls' School, and there they were doing student observations, and a group of students came and spoke to us, and I just thought it sounded fantastic. I came back and sort of said, perhaps we could try it here. And that's your sewing machine needle and it's coming down. So Marie started training students to observe and feed back to beginning teachers. And the practice has caught on. I really need to talk to you about pinning. A lot of staff felt quite threatened by it, I think, and saw it as, you know, this is just about them checking up on us. So we had quite a lot of discussions about the fact that it wasn't about checking up, it was about getting the students to really think about what makes a good lesson. Because if they're really thinking about it, they're more likely to recognise it and think about how they engage in the lesson. Just make sure you get all your templates should have been cut. You need to make sure all your felt squares have been cut out. Navpreet's being observed by Karis and Charlotte. They've been trained in tracking lessons and feeding back tactfully. Good girls, excellent work. You have that authority and you can exert it so that they can listen to you and they respect you so that when you ask them to be quiet they are quiet and some teachers can't do that and you do really well and you had the objectives prepared for the lesson, which was good, save time. Yeah, also you helped the individual students, so you went around and helped everyone individually, which is really good because some people may be more shy and may not want to ask for help, so you go around and help them yourselves. In that class, you have kids with so many different personalities, kids that need a little bit extra help. Sometimes it's like the most amount of attention they will get in that entire day. But the only thing we could think of that could help you improve, students like it and teachers speak a bit more calmly, so if you're a little bit more calm and speak more softly, then that would be really good, yeah. Oh, OK. That's a good suggestion. Yeah. If you don't ask the students their opinion, I think you'll never know. And I think sometimes it actually causes a little bit of an animosity between teachers and students because they don't, some students don't believe that teachers actually listen to them. And I come across like, I know everything, yeah. but I don't. I'm still learning. <laughs> believe you me, I'm still learning. Cynthia quietly makes very big things happen. She'll be tying all those things together, which, you know, because she's got that overview. The nature of her role is to bring about school improvement. And to do that, you've got to be a strategic leader and a strategic thinker. I think that really comes down to the nitty gritty for me of what a CPD leader's job is gaining utter clarity about the purpose of any professional development activity. We're just quite happily getting on with our jobs and Cynthia will then say, well look, this is something I think you can do and you say, well, maybe not, but okay, seeing that you can see that I can do it, I'll go ahead. You know Karen's doing a school-based MA too, but she's never qualified as a teacher. Her focus is pastoral care. I just kind of stumbled into education based on some voluntary work for one hour a week. In 2004, 
I was appointed the first non-teaching head of year for this school. As a non-teaching head of year, Karen can focus on student welfare beyond the classroom and her MA involves research on the impact this is having. I've piloted an interview with the students and it's literally just trying to write up everything now and get prepared for the end of module three which has got to be handed in at the end of July. There were times when you, you, you found the workload. How are you managing? Because you seem to be managing really well in terms of coping with doing this. I've had to be really, really disciplined with you know, juggling home life, work life, full time, plus doing the MA. At the start, you weren't sure whether it was the right thing for yeah. you or not, and you've got. Do you think yeah. you're really. The very beginning, some of us were saying, This is what I want to do, but we didn't ask ourselves why and how. Mm -hmm. So until we were either coached or in our one to one sessions, it was like, Well, how do you envisage doing that? You think, mm, Maybe not, because everything we have to keep coming back to, it needs to benefit the school. What do you think the benefits are for mm. the school? With the impact that I think my role is going to have on um, the students is to raise their confidence. And once, obviously, the confidence is outside the classroom, is raised, mm. they'll have that inside the classroom. It's really interesting to hear where it's gone. And mm. it's such an important piece of work for the school. Thank you. Some people have said to me that, why don't I go into teaching? But I've always said that you can be a teacher, but it not, not necessarily in front of a blackboard. And I think that's where I kind of stand. If you like, she is a trailblazer for the support staff because she is working alongside teachers. She's working alongside teachers who have high qualifications and she more than holds her own. Just as a little starter, just a couple of minutes discussing what does it mean to be normal. This is your lesson and, and ultimately you're going to drive it the way that you want it to go. OK, girls, so... What does it mean to be normal? It means different, different societies. Like, what's normal for me is not normal for her. Talk to me about that. Because Rob is our head of sixth form. Um, he's been with us a few years now. He's very keen to move on in the profession. Last year, he did the Leading from the Middle programme to develop his middle leadership skills. And I think he would like to become a head teacher one day. So this programme that he's on at the moment is called Leadership Pathways. One of the most important jobs a CPD leader can do in a school is to help people who are interested in moving forward as leadership candidates in that sense and um, actually explore their interest in that and begin to test out what kind of a leader could they be, what kind of a leader do they want to be. The Leadership Pathways course includes a school improvement project. Cynthia's coaching Rob on his approach. The sixth form at the moment seems to be a little bit cut off from the rest of the school yeah. in terms of yeah. the student body. My idea is that by taking on student voice, I can use student voice as the vehicle to try and integrate the sixth form into the rest of the school. Mm. What problems do you anticipate then? What sort of issues do you think might come up for you bringing well, this in? First of all, Chris, because it's her baby. Yeah and that needs to be managed very, very carefully. Yeah. I'm guessing I'm going to move it in a very different direction to where it's currently been at the mm -hmm. moment. We have to make sure you strike a balance between encouraging them to do more but not pushing them too far, uh, which is why I always do try to offer any support that I can. What are you really focusing on as far as yourself? What do you want to be better at? One of the key issues is assertiveness. I think at times, um, I don't know if it's the right phrase, but at times I'm too nice and I'm quite happy to let other people have say their piece and move yeah. things in the way that they want to. And I think one of the things that I need to do is, is be a little bit more forceful about change when change needs yeah. to happen. Yeah. Because you are ambitious to move on and get promotion and become a senior, senior manager, mm. That is a skill that you really do have to address, isn't it? Because mm. it's one of the most difficult things that people have to do is introduce change in a way that's not going to alienate everybody. That's the leadership change, the leadership project, which is well underway. In yeah. terms of your doing more modules and the online yeah. units, what, what are you actually realistically hoping to do? Everything's got to be completed by December. Realistically, in terms of planning, I've got to do these during the summer when I've got the least pressures on. Aim to do as much as you can in the summer, but we can always talk in the autumn term if, if it's becoming... Sure. You know, you've got so many other responsibilities, mm -hmm. and if it's becoming too much, then we need to have that conversation in the autumn term as well. Um, it's not about anyone telling somebody what to do or even necessarily giving them advice. Coaching is about listening, uh, something that teachers don't always find very easy. 
But we have to learn to listen to one another and hear what people are saying. Who's, who's going to be bowler? Coaching is a way of involving all staff in school improvement too. Cynthia recognises the expertise and insight of long-serving TAs like Anne Savage. They have such power to support learning and will actually help teachers to improve how they teach and kids support kids and help them learn. So they're really, really important in our schools now. And a lot of them are lacking in the confidence. They, they don't like to make suggestions to teachers because they think teachers won't listen to them or won't value what they're saying. And it's hard. Support staff needs are hard to address. So Cynthia mixes support and other staff in co-coaching teams. She and Anne are in the same team with English NQT Hannah Smith. And there's no hierarchy or anything like that. You'll just listen to one another, you share your problems and, and offer each other solutions and ideas. Shall we just review what we think we've got out of this co-coaching this year? The three of us, yeah? It worked out quite well because I was working with Anne in my year nine lesson as well. Um, and I observed a P lesson. Just seeing how much work you put into just keeping the student you're working with on track, as well as sorting out the logistics of the lesson and getting the latecomers, getting people changed. And, you know, I think it was, it was really interesting to watch you actually and focus in just on how you were doing that and how you were engaging the students. Is there anything you've taken from that, Anne, which is helping you to become even better at what you do? It's just made me feel confident, right? much more confident, and um, just uh, maybe wanting to do more. But how Being... has your confidence helped the kids learning in the classroom? Because that's what we're trying to do with the support staff, isn't it? We, we mean it desperately trying to raise their self-esteem and confidence so that they actually can approach teachers and say to teachers, you know, have you but... thought about this? I think the onus should be on the teachers as well to actually realise and be more open perhaps and ask for more suggestions. We're listening to support staff and we're valuing their perspective because they see things from their perspective in the classroom that teachers never see. It takes a while to build up those relationships. Uh, and for a new and support sort of staff, confidence. I think it would take a long time for them to approach a teacher. Trying to get teachers and the whole staff to recognise what support oh, staff do. Uh, well, do you think that sort of observation really definitely, helps? Definitely, definitely. It was nice for a teacher to come and observe me, you know, and then when uh, Hannah had put down what I'd done during the lesson, I couldn't mm. believe that I'd, I'd done that much because to me, it was just like a normal lesson in what I would do. Mm. And it just made me feel really special and like I, I am one of the team. All CPD is around improving teaching and learning and there shouldn't really be anything going on that's called CPD that isn't actually for that purpose um, and everything has to fit together. The paperwork and the procedures shouldn't be the main focus of the job at all and that's where I think Cynthia is really showing the way and really leading the way forward in a CPD leader being strategic and being focused on school improvement. If you look after your staff and you develop them and you give them those opportunities, then they are going to be more effective teachers and then we'll have better learning going on in the classroom. So everybody wins.